Welcome to the Asian Connection Mortgage Podcast, where we connect Asian Canadians together to talk about anything related to real estate, mortgages, and finances, based out of Vancouver. Our host is John Lee, mortgage broker with Arise Mortgage. Grab a bubble tea and enjoy the episode. Welcome back to the podcast. My name is John Lee, and today we're diving into a topic that's always top of mind for many first-time buyers. The incentives available to help make that first home purchase a little bit more affordable. So who doesn't like free money, right? Or incentives from the government. If you're buying your first home in British Columbia, there are some great programs designed to help you to get into the housing market. And we're going to break them down so you can take full advantage of them. So let's get started. These are the key incentives you should definitely know about. I'll be covering the property transfer tax exemptions, new build rebates, and a couple of federal programs that can also help, like the First Home Savings Account, or FHSA, and the Home Buyer's Plan. First up is the property transfer tax exemption. This program is designed to reduce or even eliminate the property transfer tax you'd normally have to pay when buying a home. If you're purchasing a home value up to $500,000, you may be eligible for a full exemption from the property transfer tax. And for homes that's priced between $500,000 and $835,000, there is a partial exemption. You still get the rebate, of up to 500,000, which I calculated is $8,000. And then you will be responsible for anything that's above that. Now, there are a few more conditions in order to take advantage of this. You have to be a Canadian citizen or have a PR card, permanent resident, and you must have never owned an interest in a principal residence anywhere in the world. And the property also has to be your principal residence. And it has to be in BC, so it can't be a rental property. Number two, the next one is also related to the property transfer tax exemption, but it's specifically designed for brand new properties. Now this one, you don't have to be a first time home buyer, but it works very similar to the one I just mentioned before. So if it is a brand new property, the price limit for that is $1.1 million. So if your brand new property purchase price is 1.1 mil or less, then you will get the full exemption of the property transfer tax. And I ran the numbers and this is actually quite a bit. So if you're buying something that is 1.1 million and you just maxed it out, the property transfer tax for that is $20,000. So that is free money that the government will give you. It will be waived and you don't have to pay any of that. Uh, Same as the previous one uh, for the conditions, it needs to be owner occupied. So the next two, so the two that I mentioned, those are specifically for British Columbia. And next two are federal programs. So anywhere in Canada, you can take advantage of them. First is the first home savings account. So this account is a tax-free savings account specifically for savings towards the first home for first-time home buyers. You can contribute up to $8,000 per year to the FHSA with a lifetime limit of $40,000. So what's the best part? When you contribute into this account, the contributions are tax deductible. And any withdrawals for the purpose of buying your first home are tax-free. So you get tax benefits both ways. If you haven't opened this account yet, make sure you open it as soon as possible. The government, you know, they it is an incentive, but also in a way they don't really want to give too, too much. So the thing is, you don't actually get the limit if you don't open it. So even if you don't plan on contributing this year, just open it so then you still have that limit for that year. The great thing about this is that you can contribute it right away and you 
may not need to invest and just get the tax deductible. And just the tax deductible, you can actually save quite a lot. So random numbers, if say you make $100,000 for your annual income and you contributed $8,000 into the first home savings account, because it is tax deductible, even though you earn $100,000, the government will actually just see your income as $92,000. So $100,000 minus the 8,000 that you contributed. And the tax savings, I calculated $2,348. So that's just free money from the government. So definitely make sure that you open this account and take advantage of it. So there are some people who are in different stages for home buying. Some are young and it's just going to be a few years that you're going to be purchasing a place. This is a great account to put your money in, invest tax-free, allow your money to grow. Now, there are some people who are looking to buy a place like say this year. And you may be like, oh, well, what's the point of opening this account? It's not like I'm going to you know, invest my money and earn, earn the return tax-free. It doesn't really matter because you know, it's not like you're going to invest into stocks or something risky because this is going to be your down payment. But just like what I just said, still open it, contribute into it, and then you just take it out even though you're not earning anything, in fact, you don't even need to invest it. The tax deductible that you're earning and getting from government is still going to be worth it. The last incentive that I'm going to talk about is the RSP Home Buyers Plan. For this plan, this allows you to withdraw from your RSP up to $60,000 to buy or build your first home. If you're buying with your partner, fiance, or spouse who is also a first time buyer, that amount can double. So you can both withdraw uh, $60,000 each. And if you combine it, that's $120,000. Just keep in mind that you do need to pay the money back into the RSP, but it's within 15 years but it can be a useful tool if you've been diligent about building your retirement savings. And how I like to view it is you are in a way borrowing money from your RSP at 0% interest. And you just need to repay this loan back within 15 years. A big difference between the RSP and the first home savings account is that when you contribute into the RSP and you want to use that money for the home buyer's plan, you can actually use it right away. There is a vesting period and it's 90 days. So make sure you time it so that if you are going to contribute into it, it has to sit for 90 days or else if you decide to pull it out within 90 days, it will be taxable income. So these are the four main first time buyers incentives that people usually take advantage of. And they're great. Like they can make a huge difference when you're buying your first home. They'll help reduce the upfront costs and make homeownership more accessible. It's always a good idea to speak to an accountant, speak to a mortgage broker like myself, who can help you navigate these programs and ensure you're taking full advantage of every opportunity available. Because you only have that one shot. You can only be a first home buyer just once, right? So make sure you take advantage of these programs. So that's it for today's episode. If you have any questions or need more personalized advice, feel free to reach out to me. I'd love to help you on your journey to home ownership. And as always, thanks for tuning in. Make sure to subscribe, leave a review if you found this episode helpful. Until next time, happy house hunting, and I'll see you in the next episode. Thank you for tuning in. If you enjoyed today's episode, please.
please consider giving us a review and subscribing to our podcast on your favorite platform. Thank you for listening, and we'll see you next time on the Asian Connection Mortgage Podcast.